there we go. All right. Well, we have with us from Nicaragua today, um, we have Emily Reyes, who is CEPOD's executive director. She's waving her hand there. She may look really tiny on your screen, um, but you can also choose how you want to see people. There's a little button in my computer. It's on the right hand side of my Zoom screen that says view. Um, and you have a choice if you want to see the speaker or you want to see everybody's everybody's video. Um, so you can change that on your own computer. Um, Emily, you may have many of you may have been familiar or known Damaris, who's also on the call. She was a pod's executive director for many years. And Emily um, was the one who, who um, took over for Damaris after she retired. We also have Harold um, Blandone who is um, sitting next to Emily there. Um, he's also probably, many of you know Harold, he's been working with SAPOD for many years. And then we also have Nicole, who is a reformed um, Church of America missionary who is working with SAPOD. Um, so I am going to um, be quiet and I'm going to let them take it over. Buenas noches a todos y a todas. Good evening, everybody. Es un placer vol volverlos a ver desde hace un año. It is a pleasure to see all of you again after a year. Y esta la tecnología nos permite poder reunirnos nuevamente. And the technology is allowing us to be together again. A todos los veo con una gran sonrisa y con muy buena salud. I see all of you with a big smile and very healthy. Eh, parte de lo que voy a hablarles ahorita es sobre el inicio de este nuevo año 2022. Part of the, our, I will be talking is just how this year is going to begin. It's beginning. Y yo se los quiero presentar en cuatro áreas. I want to, to present this in like in four main areas. En nuestra presentación es hablar cómo está Nicaragua actualmente. So one more uh, issue is how is Nicaragua right now? En lo económico, político, Economic, social y religioso. And religious. En lo económico. If we talk about economic. Nicaragua, la senda del crecimiento económico. Nicaragua on the path of the economic growth. Desde el 2018 estamos, bueno, El país de Nicaragua ha ido creciendo poco a poco en el ámbito eh, económico. Since 2018, Nicaragua has been growing little by little in the economic part. Supporting uh, small businesses, strengthening the tourism area, improving the employment, and also different kind of projects here in Nicaragua. And I, I will add that the remittances have been increased since, the, since last year. And that is because many people have been migrating from Nicaragua to other countries. And I can say since 2018, the amount of people migrating to outside of Nicaragua has increased. The other thing I want to mention is the increase in the on the petroleum um, prices. I know that these issues is affecting all around the world. But here in Nicaragua is affecting us in a huge way because all the prices are going up like every week after week. But also a good thing is that the price of the coffee production has been grow also. And 
I want to mention this because in Nicaragua, we have a lot of a small coffee farmer that the, for them is like a, the main way of income. If, if we talk about polit, polit, politic issues, I want to mention just three points. So many sanctions have come to some of the official of the state for so many reasons, mostly polit political. This has affected our country in some ways. Because some product cannot get in into our country like medicines. So businesses like a gas station and other kind of business, they have to close for these sanctions. So the country has received economic support from organization like bank. And that allowed the government to be able to finance some project. I can't hear him anymore. Harold, something just happened to the sound. Really? No, Can you no, hear you're me? Good. Yeah, now you're good. So the government is, is planning to work the national plan to fight poverty and they will start in 2022. So I mentioned some points that are positive and some points that are negative. But that is the situation here in Nicaragua. If we talk about the social issues, right now we have the 99% of electric power core around the country. And that allowed the, the energy go all the way to, to the like uh, deepest or the farthest villages in, the, in our country. The health ministry is continuing with the vaccination program against COVID. Right now, the government is saying that we reach more than the 90% of vaccination around the country with just one dose. Here in Nicaragua, we are waiting for new or more vaccines. Because we, when we receive this vaccine, we will be able to cover the whole Nicaraguan population. So the travels from outside of Nicaragua to Nicaragua have been increasing little by little. And that allowed like uh, the tourists start to grow and that also showed that in Nicaragua is a, a safety place to come. So that also showed that little by little we are getting to the normal level. So if we, to finish the social part, I will say that we have some increase in the food product prices. Sequía, 
the drought and also the rainy season that we didn't have a very good rainy season the last year has been affecting us a lot. And that provoke or create and the price of the staple food like a rice, bean, corn, increase the prices. So a lot, if we talk about the religion, I will say that many different like uh, denomination have come together to work and pray for the poor. So and also if we talk about the religion, I will mention that many churches have been submitting the papers to the to the government and that has been creating a, like a little problem with them because this process is like a very slow process. MINSA means health ministry and MINGOP means the government ministry. So there is the two main like a government institution. One is more focusing on health and the other is more focused like a oversee the application of the law in Nicaragua. Emily, can you put the next slide? What we can say about CEPAT Nicaragua? We were able to get to our 50th anniversary. In the, in the middle of all these kind of situation, we have been adapting. If we talk about the laws that you already probably you already read on the news. And many NGOs have, have been closed. Universities have been closed. Mm -hmm. But we as a CEPAD, we accomplish year after year all our obligation in front of the government. That allow us to continue our work in a very transparent way and trust. We do a lot of coordination with all the different institutions from the government. So we coordinate all the effort with the hurricane, with the tremors. We try to continue with our work following all the recommendation about health and to be able to achieve our goals. There is more, more, much more information that I would like to share. But this, this is just a brief explanation from Sepad point of view. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Emily, continuamos. Okay. 
Mi siguiente parte, para informarles a ustedes de qué es el PAD, porque sabemos que hay muchas personas que es la primera vez que se enlazan con nosotros. So the next part is to explain to probably many of you that you don't know anything about CEPAD. I will explain that. So CEPAD is the Council of Protestant Churches of Nicaragua. So we had 23 uh, members denominations. We have a group of pastors and representatives from different churches in our board. And for so many years that CEPAL had been working in Nicaragua, we had been working also in so many communities, more than 3,000 villages. We are already working all the different departments of Nicaragua. I will I will share a map. So in that map you will see where are we working right now in this 2022. We are in Nueva Guinea, Teustepe. Carazo and El Jicaral. Carazo y El Santa Maria Santa Maria Pantasma and Matagalpa are in the up, of course. And this year we are going to start working in the Madrid department in Somoto municipality. So we are going to cover seven departments. Where we are going to provide assistance to more than 1,200 families. Sorry. And we also include, as you see in the map, Jinotega and Quilambe. Because during this year, we are going to work in three villages from Quilambe. So I will say that CEPAD is going to work with 50 villages during this year. That the Lord allow us to do that. And we have a strong commitment to be able to achieve all or this goal doesn't matter the pandemic that we are facing right now. So we are, I want to mention that we also be working like a, to provide a continued support to the b b villages that were affected during the two hurricanes. In those areas, we are going to provide psychosocial attention workshops. We will provide like a health kit to the villages. With this pandemic, many of the, our beneficiaries lost their job, they, they got sick. So that is the main reason that we are providing this, providing to them this health kit. We, we are going to support the production so right now in the first planting season, where the farmer by themselves they will be they will be working to produce their own food. So 
So I will say that during this year, CEPAD is going to execute the annual plan and they will, we will execute all the different programs that we implement in all the villages. So part to be able to achieve all of this, we have to be trying to find funds, money, and for that reason, we were able to receive support from one organization. So that is all the information that I want to mention about CEPAD. I, I also want to let you know that in March, we are going to start to execute all our different programs in all the different regions that we will be working during, during this 2022. We hopefully, we are going to share during a couple of weeks from now, our annual report. So in that way, you will see all the achievement um, that we already um, achieved during the first year of our far year of intervention. Because in the 47 villages that, that I already mentioned, we will be working from 2021 to 2025. So later on, you will receive more information about our project, our project, our program, and everything that we will do. So we have been receiving some questions and we will try to answer during this um, during this time. Emily, can I continue? Sí, creo que sí. Después podemos contestar las preguntas. Okay, está bien. Está bien. Our third theme of, of explanation. We as a CEPAD, we want to encourage to all of you as soon as possible and to come to visit us. We have more than two years now without seeing each other in person. So, and Sepa just start this like a journey for the 50th anniversary. So in February 24, we we made our first like a uh, workshop just to open this journey. Where we were able to share all our work in all the different media, national wide. That allow us to let us to the people know about CEPAD all around Nicaragua. As part of our 50th anniversary celebration, we will continue with the with our construction plan. Ya 
Uh, actually, we have just a uh, part of our perimeter wall. wall. So little by little, we, we will be building this wall. So the next time that you come to Nicaragua to visit us, you will be able to see this wall. And we also have Nicole here, a missionary from the Reformed Church of America. She had been very brave to come to Nicaragua and be with us. So I will let Nicole to talk about her experience here in Nicaragua. Is she on mute? Nicole, you're muted. So you've either got to unmute your computer or Harold has to unmute his. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, really bad feedback. The other computers in the room need to mute. Can you hear me now? in January, so just two months ago. Um, and to be honest, the travel was pretty smooth. I had to do my COVID test um, three days before flying. Yeah, we should get up for you guys. Okay. Can you guys hear me better now? Yes, great. <laughs> so I just had to do my COVID test um, three days before coming. Um, and then the airline sent me all the information. I just had to get it approved. Um, but the airline was really, really good about sending stuff out a few days before, the day before, day of. Um, and coming back into the country was very easy. They just asked to see the negative test. Um, and I was able to get through security and customs, no problem. So it was very easy. And right now, quarantine is not required. I completed a short quarantine just for myself. Um, but the government is not requiring that. I also I will I also will share about an experience. Um, Karen Joseph from Amos Trust. She just came like uh, two weeks ago, and she passed through all this like a, in a very easy way, as Nicole mentioned. And with her, I was able to to travel all our, almost all around Nicaragua. We visit eight villages in Teustepe. We move all the way to Granada, from Granada to Matagalpa, Matagalpa, Somoto, almost in the border with Honduras. And from there all the way to Managua. And she felt very safety. Also during her time in Granada, she was by herself. She walked around Granada and she told me that she felt very safety in all the different places than she visited during this, like a two week of just knowing the first time that she came to Nicaragua. So just knowing all around Nicaragua. So that was a little of her experience. And she was so happy also to be in the 50th anniversary with us as a representative of Amos Trust. So that is another experience about how easy and is to travel to Nicaragua right now. And also I want to mention that for the COVID test to get back to the US is easy if we do all the payment ahead because that allow us just to go to the Minsa lab in the morning and just five or 10 minutes, you're done. You are ready to go for a tour day and, and relax. So uh, in the afternoon, the government will send the result on the test with a code and they will provide you in the lab. You can get in into the MINSA webpage and you will follow, you will find your, your result from the COVID test. So now it's, we are getting to know more and more how all this step had to be accomplished when we receive a delegation. That's it for myself.
Y quiero anexar a esto de que prontamente vamos a tener a otra voluntaria de la Iglesia Nacional. I want to mention that very soon we are going to receive another volunteer from the Reformed Church of America. Y otras dos delegaciones o hermanamientos que ya tienen programada su visita en este año. And two new par uh, two partnerships that are planning to come during this year. You asked to us when CEPAD is ready to receive delegations. Since January 2022, we can receive delegations. I want to share also our brochure, our invitation brochure. I think some of you are very received this brochure, invitation brochure, but if not, we will send it again. Where you can read more information about how to travel to Nicaragua, how to travel in this pandemic time, the request from the airline, and also we are. We are going. We are going to inform also how we can reduce our footprint. Because as a CEPAD, we want to continue trying to help the nature, the environment. So, so this is an invitation for all of you. But you are in charge to decide in which day you want to come to visit us. So we will send all this information to all of you. Anna Taylor that was supposed to be with us. She couldn't be here because she's very sick right now. But she also sent a lot of greetings. She really wanted to be here seeing all of you. So if you have questions, we will answer the question in the order that they were written on the chat box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions that was put in the chat box was um, there was some information that said that the um, participation in um, in evangelical churches in Nicaragua had grown by 37%. So there was a question about um, whether that means that 37% of the population is Protestant and evangelical, um, or is it more or less? Dice que alguien compartió que el 37% de la población de Nicaragua es gente evangélica, que si eso es, está correcto. Sí, es un dato que salió en el 2020. Yes, that data came out in 2020. Porque hace 10 años estábamos a un 15%. Because 10 years ago we were just in the 15%. Así que ha crecido. So the Protestant churches had been gross in that time. There was also a question about um, someone was interested in knowing more about the cooperation between CEPAD and the Reformed Church of America. Alguien quiere saber más de la colaboración de CEPAD y la Iglesia Reformada de América. Nicole said that the Reformed Church of America is supporting the office in Pantasma region. So the Reformed Church, the Reformed Church of America is, is a, in, a, in a partnership with the Pantasma CEPAD office. 
So they support our annual plan in that area, in Pantasma region. And also they send, they send their missionaries to support the work of Zepat. And there is a huge support that we say thank you to all of them. Other question? There were two questions related to delegations. Um, one person asked if um, that their understanding was that there were going to be two delegate. There are two delegations currently planned. Um, is that is that correct? And what months are they? When are they going? Um, and then another question from somebody else that was asking how many delegations are planned for this year so far. Okay, dice que hay mencionaron que hay dos delegaciones que quieren venir para qué fechas más o menos y también este que cuántas delegaciones ya están registradas para venir este año. Okay. Yes, we have just a tentative delegation. Uh, one is in May, that is uh, Lake Michigan. That is, they are in our calendar right now. So we just need to confirm that they will come in. The other delegation is from the Reformed Church of America, the supervisor of the mis missionaries and the secretary of the R RCA are coming in in April, about the amount of people that have been registered just to come into Nicaragua, I will say that right now they are the only two, but uh, there is a lot of like a three or four group that are interested, but they didn't confirm yet. And then Harold, there's another question whether US airlines are flying into Managua. No, no U.S. airline are flying to Nicaragua. So what the other people have been doing is travel all the way to Miami. And from Miami, they take a Bianca to fly from Miami to Nicaragua. My Avianca is the only airline that is traveling to Nicaragua right now. You don't have to use the chat box. If you want to just unmute yourself and ask a question, you're also welcome to do that. Hi, Emily, this is Peggy Becker in Del Mar, New York. I thought I would mention, it sounds like there's a lot of interest from reformed churches. And I thought I would mention, we are Del Mar Reformed Church. And we've been traveling for 20 years to Nicaragua through CEPAD. They had led us to understand mission work there. And we have had a partnership with a community, El Castillo, outside of Matagalpa since 2013. And I would love it if there are people on this call. I see Fred, uh, I see you're here. Uh, I would love it if anybody would like to travel with us come and join us. Uh, we can get um, Avianca air flights out of Newark and near us. So even if we joined together and met up uh, on the East Coast, we could fly together and, and make it a, a great experience or meet in uh, Miami. Um, and I think it would be wonderful. We always welcome uh, other churches partnering with us so that we can share our experience and, and help anybody who seems um, uncertain about how to do that. Thanks, Peggy. Anybody else have questions or comments? Our goal with this meeting I think, is mostly to sort of give an update on what's happening. Um, and I, I know, if not by face, I know by name, almost everybody on the call. Um, and so I know most of you are, are very, you know, very familiar with the work that SEPA does. Um, and we do try to, you know, I always try to keep you informed of what's going on through the newsletter. Um, we do have a newsletter that will be coming out to you in the next couple of weeks um, with more stories of people and, and the lives that you are changing. Um, 
so that is that's really the most important thing um and and i i love putting that together because for me it's it really is is actually inspirational for me to hear those stories um and it's really a joy to to be able to share them all with you and if you are not on our um our list our mail list and you would like to be just send me an email and and let me know and i can make sure to put you on there um any other questions about say pods work or what's happening right now uh, judith and just uh, following up on the reform church in america thing because we are members of the rca and um i don't hear anything mentioned about uh but the children's feeding program that the RCA does, I think it's on the east side of the country. And I'm wondering if you are coordinating with that at all, or is that totally separate part of the RCA um, thing? Because we do, we like to support that program through the RCA. I, it looks like Nicole's gonna take that question. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to unmute us quick. Yeah, so the RCA does support a ministry on the East Coast in Bluefield, and that's something completely different um, from SAPOD. Hi, Sue, go for it. Hi, thank you so much, Emily. It is a pleasure to be on this Zoom call with everyone. Hi, Harold. It's been a long time. I have a question. It is remarkable and fantastic that I wrote down that CEPAD has worked with 3,000 villages in every district in Nicaragua. Myself, we are Presbyterian of the Pacific, had a partnership for 13 years, and I've been there seven times, and I, I love Nicaragua. I, if, if I remember correctly, CEPAD works with a village or a community for a five-year commitment. My question is, is there any follow up in a years later past the five year mark where say pod will go back to a village and check in with them and, and see how they're doing or is it five years and you know the the support is pretty much over after five years is there any follow up past five years with these villages. I can see Harold is translating. <laughs> so we'll we'll let him translate and, and, and let Emily respond. Gracias, Sue. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Eh, sí, nosotros eh, por cinco años trabajamos con 47 comunidades. So as you mentioned, Sue, we work for five years with, with the villages, 47 villages. Cuando nos trasladamos a otras comunidades. When we move to new villages. No es que cortamos totalmente. We don't like a, cut the connection like a right away. Pero lo que hacemos es dar como un seguimiento de todo lo que hemos hecho por lo menos dos veces al año. What we are able to do is just to provide a small follow up twice a year with every people that we have been working in the past. Por lo menos cuando trabajamos con los productores, nosotros verificamos si ellos siguen utilizando las técnicas que les hemos enseñado. So when we work with farmer, we go back and Check it out if they continue using the technique that we train them to use. And it has been very impressive to see that many of them have been applying all the different techniques that CEPAD trained them during the time with them. And we use them as a example for the new villages uh, to show them what they can achieve. So when we 
no comunicándonos con las demás para que ellos sigan desarrollando sus su proyectos. Yeah, so as soon as we move to new villages, we little by little, it's, it's like a stop or decrease our contact with the older villages because we want that they take their role as a leader and they can continue for their own development by themselves. And we have been seeing that the that communities that Sepad worked with them 15 years ago, they continue applying the technique that we showed them or trained them. Yep. Gracias. Any other questions? Oh. More questions? I, I was wondering if um, say who you are. Uh, this is Judy and Jerry Aker. We were on that trip that Sepad USA organized uh, two years ago. That was a very good experience. And um, wondering if you're thinking about proactively organizing something like that again, and if that might include youth or because I think involving uh, youth and in a learning experience like that is very, uh, very beneficial. I can I can speak on behalf of CEPAD USA. Um, that was the last time I was in Nicaragua too. <laughs> um, and it was right before right before COVID. Um, literally, like we got home from our trip, those of you and people are nodding, there were a number of people were on that trip that are on this call, you know, we got home and right almost right after we got home, it was it was like, okay, then we went into lockdown. Um, so it's yeah, I know for many of us, it's like, when can we get back? Um, so say Pod USA, we we have tried, we've done a few donor trips. I think that was the second or the third donor trip we had done. Um, and so I think for sure that's something we want to do um, in the future. We haven't, um, because I think for many of us where we live, you know, COVID is still, I look at a map regularly. Most of the country seems to be improving where I live in Maine. Um, it's we're still in in a very red you know red position. So I think as a pod USA certainly that is something that we want we we want to do. We want to be able to continue to take trips, um, but we're not in plan in a planning phase quite yet. Um, so so yes, we would like to. When I, I don't know quite yet. So um, just as an organization, we're still trying to figure out when can you know when do we feel comfortable going back down. So um, that's, that's, that's where we are, I think. And your question about youth is a great one. I know in the past, um, there are churches that have often actively recruited youth to go on mission trips. Um, so that is something that I know many churches have, have focused on in, in past years, um, trying to get, to get youth down there. And if anybody else has anything else to add about that, you please feel free. Emily, it's Peggy. I'm trying to start my video. Yeah, I wholeheartedly support the idea of getting youth down. We always try to bring one, two, five youth with us. Um, it's a challenge only because, uh, you know, there's other youth groups and, um, you know, the, the traveling is a little more difficult sometimes. But honestly, I can, I can say from firsthand experience that it's the youth who make the, make the trip for us. Um, and especially connecting with the youth in the community where we visit, it's they're so popular and it's just a wonderful connection. Can I add a comment on to that? So uh, we, we were down, our church had a delegation eight years ago, 2013, and we had a very diverse group in all respects, including age. We had a lot of children and the it was received so well by our, our community down there to see 
for them to see that youth were invested in the relationship made a huge difference. They don't want to just see the older people as much as they love us. They want to see all ages. And it was commented on constantly during the visit. Yeah, a lot of the youth that we've taken down actually ended up as pen pals with some of the young people there. Um, there was a question about Bluefields. My kids still keep in touch with um, some of the young people in in uh, the you know the Kelly Bob um, orbit as well, and so it's it's been very very valuable both ways. Thank you. We have so many years and what a wealth of experience on, on this call. Just with so many people who have been to Nicaragua. Um, so it's just fantastic. Um, that's another reason why I love doing this when we have the opportunity to share and, and hear about each other's experiences. I think it's, I think it's really rich. I want to mention. I want to mention the that we program in our plan an international encounter in November this year between the from the 7th to the 11th of November this year. We are planning this and we you will receive more information pretty soon as we develop the final plans. Yeah, yes, that's it. Well, if there are no more questions, we I don't like to keep this to more than an hour because being on Zoom for more than an hour is, is painful. Um, but it's really just so wonderful. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Thank you for all your gifts, all your prayers all of your, your warm wishes. I know that, um, you know, that, that the folks in Nicaragua um, really feel, you know, your love and your care um, from, from the distance. And, um, and you are, are really the ones that make, um, you know, these, these fantastic programs possible. Um, and you truly are changing lives every day. I know that that wasn't, the focus of tonight was sort of more an update what's going on. Um, but, but do be on the lookout for your newsletter where we've got some fantastic stories of, of people's lives who, who you have touched and, and who, who you've, you know, whose lives you have changed. So um, thank you so much for that. If you were not on right at the beginning of the call, um, I was going to, you don't have to stay on, but say Pod did commission for their 50th anniversary a song um, which I will play again just to just to finish us up here. So you're welcome to leave, but if you want to stay on um, and and watch and hear that song, then then please feel free to do that. Um, and if you do leave, thank you again for coming. And it was so fantastic to see everybody. Thank you, Emily, for doing this and for um, communicating all this. This has really been interesting. Wonderful. All right. Oops, thank, you. thank you very much, Emily. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Technical difficulties here. <laughs> thank you all. Here, I'm going to try to share this now. Let's see. Here we go. de caminar en ese principio de Cristo ayudar al que sufre con gran hermandad nada ha pasado casual Dios ha actuado en todo momento somos la familia sepad apostando al progreso del pueblo
Sorry, my internet just gave out. <laughs> so, um, but I, we, we, this song um, is, I will, I'm not sure it's on our, the Say Pod USA website, but I will make sure it is. Um, is so if you wanted to see the whole thing, because my internet just stopped working, um, I will make sure you get, you can get a link to it and see it there. So thank you again, everybody. Wonderful to see you. Um, and I hope you have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Let's be Adios. Adios, Ed. Bye, Ed. Adios. Bye, Elaine. Adios. Hey, Bill. Bye. Laura. Adios. Good, good to see you. Good to see you. You too. Gracias, Emily. Gracias, Emily. Nada. Estamos en Hasta contacto. La Hasta la próxima. Okay. See you next time. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Bye.